First of all, this whole video you're gonna hear my roommates yelling in the background. Second of all, anyone want any tea? So lo and behold, a very late night September wrap up at October TBR. The first book I read in September was The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I actually also read an arc of the second book called The Wicked King, so I'll discuss those two books in tandem. I feel like when I do vlogs, I'm so casual, then when I do sit down videos, I'm like, hello, let me tell you things. I'm very angelic and polite, but the trash monsters under the skin, I promise. Anyway, The Cruel Prince. <laughs> I will disclaim first and foremost that I think it's like a four star 4.5 star series. It's not flawless to me, but it's the good good. It's so nice. This series follows a girl named Jude who is born in the human world with her twin sister and her older sister who is half fae. When she's very young, this person from the fairy world comes and kidnaps her and her sisters to the fairy world and they're gonna live there under that person's control. And so it's all about Jude having to exist and survive in this world that's not for her. And the primary plot of this book is that there's this prince of the kingdom named Prince Cardin and she and him have always had a conflict. Hello! Oh my god! Hey guys! Hey guys! <laughs> <laughs> you scared me so bad when you knocked I was like, mm. <laughs> Talking about the cruel prince, what do you have to say about the cruel prince? Did you cry that one? Did I? Was it the sequel? I don't remember. I probably cried. It's just in my personality. Whitney loved The Cruel Prince. It's all she could talk about. Oh my god, I can smell that. It's avocado. It smells like chemical. Avocado? Carry on, Whitney. Holmes. Thank you. I love you. I forgot I was talking about. There's conflicts between different kingdoms, shenanigans ensue. That's just the words that I use to tell you that I really don't know how else to describe it. And then book two just takes that and expands it because there's a plot twist at the end of book one that book two goes into. Then book two is all about angst and war drama and it just heightens the stakes of Jude having to survive and prove that she's worthy of having a say. But yes, I gave both books 4.5 stars. I did end up liking the sequel better. The next book I read was one of my most anticipated books of the year and everyone was very enthusiastic about me reading it. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This story follows a woman named Evelyn Hugo. She's retired from acting and she hires this reporter to do a story about her. When the reporter shows up there, she realizes that Evelyn actually wants her to write her entire biography, tell all her secrets, talk about these seven marriages she's had, and her elusive life that she's lived from the media. And it's just Evelyn telling her story of being an actress from the 50s through the 80s. And this book is magnificent. I understand why it has all the hype. This book talks about the Hollywood industry, Evelyn's bisexuality, it really paints the picture of a rags to riches story where you're immersed in the glamour of the 60s and the 70s. But it's also this parallel narrative of this reporter getting to know this person's life and applying her life and her advice to her own troubles she's going through. So it's complex and intricately woven, but at the same time still really accessible and easy to devour. Clearly, I've marked a lot of quotes that I liked. I think this book has a powerful message and it does so in a way that was really engaging. This wasn't quite the full five-star amazing book for me that it was for everyone else, simply because the writing style of this was almost a little bit too modern for the voice of like an 80-year-old woman. And that could be explained away by the fact that the reporter is telling her life story, so it could be the reporter's voice, but just the flashbacks that Evelyn was narrating her life didn't seem very true to the voice of an elderly woman. That's maybe a personal preference, but that's the real only issue I had with this book. I gave it a glowing 4.6 seven five stars like almost that five star but I had that one problem with the voice of it. I love the message of this book and just the vibes and the way that it lingers with you afterward and I cried at the end of this. The next book I picked up was Sex Object by Jessica Valenti. Jessica Valenti is a renowned feminist. This is her most personal book and it's a memoir about what it's like growing up being sexualized. I read this in less than a day. The beginning and the end seemed like really necessary additions and they were on top and they made really great valid points about the dangers of sexualizing and objectifying women but then the middle just lagged and she was just talking about relationships and her boyfriends and the issues she was going through at the time with drug addiction. And I know it's a memoir so it gives her the room to talk about her life and her experiences but it seemed to stray from the point of the title of the book and it just wasn't my favorite. So I gave this four stars. I still think that it has a great takeaway message and I would recommend it but it does drag a bit in the middle. The next book that I finished was Dirty Rowdy thing by Christina Lauren which has a dirty rowdy title. This is the second book in the Wild Season series, the first book being Sweet Filth 
something. It's right here. And this follows a second group of friends that were in the first book. The guy's a struggling fisherman, which seems so weird and outdated. I'm just struggling even trying to find a synopsis for this because it was so bland and I didn't like the plot of it at all. The characters somewhat redeemed it, but not very much because there's a 10 year age gap between these two characters, which is not my thing. And additionally, I just felt like the guy was a little bit belittling to her because of that. And the girl was very strong, but he somehow found a way to mute that. And I just didn't think they worked well together. I ended up just skim reading the conflict of this book because it wasn't that interesting to me. It's not my favorite. I gave this three stars, meaning it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. There's nothing staunchly wrong with it. I just vastly prefer book one. Then I took a hot minute to read the big bulky novel, The Poppy War by R. F. Kuang. This is a story about this girl who gets accepted into this prestigious military academy and she's training to learn all the different facets of working for the government and defending her homeland. And a neighboring country starts having plans of invading and so very quickly she has to abandon this military and start leaping into defending her country. And it follows her life over several years having to deal with the very crucial circumstances of a war-torn country and issues with class. She's from the south and she's the only one in her class at the highest elite university. So she's discriminated against and it deals with her wanting to pursue this art that's almost been lost that deals with spirituality and powers. I thought this was gonna be a standalone but this ended up being a very open-ended ending so I cannot wait to read more of this story in this world. I gave this four stars because although I enjoyed how tremendous of a journey this was and how we get to see the full action of this girl's life from this girl who started at the very bottom and now she's here. <laughs> there were sections of this that lulled just because between certain events and action there would be downtime that weren't as interesting but overall this was a very interesting read different than what I've read before because it's Chinese inspired love this main character cannot wait for the sequel next I listened to an audiobook and I read The Bassoon King by Rain Wilson this book just follows Rain's life as he became an actor and started learning the craft going to college for it, even going on Broadway which I didn't know he did before he did TV shows so this is all about his life his spirituality his training a lot of celebrity memoirs tend to be like here's my life let me tell you about my life. And I thought this was a way more well-rounded and conversational book rather than just a I am an important person let me tell you about myself. This was honest and down to earth and I found myself genuinely caring about his backstory even though I really only picked this up because I wanted to hear more about his experience on The Office which those chapters were super fun and I enjoyed a lot. But this was just a surprise for me. I didn't realize I would like it as much as I did. I ended up giving this 4.25 stars and I would highly recommend it if you're into The Office. The next book I read was Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick. This book is about a depressed and suicidal young teenager who decides that because the world has wronged him and he's very upset, he wants to kill his ex-best friend and then kill himself. And it's one of those books where you're not necessarily supposed to root for the main character, you're just going along on this story with them to see where you end up. My main takeaway from this book is that you never know what someone's going through in their inner life and to always be kind to them because this book is also sort of an outcry of this young person who's just craving someone to notice him and to help him and you're going throughout the entire book wondering if that will ever happen if anyone will ever give him that recognition that he needs to be able to recover so at the same time that it's disturbing it's also really sad reading this on audio was phenomenal picking it up physically was also just as great because it flew by I gave this book a solid four stars it really made me reflect on how we treat people and it was dark but I think it's a necessary conversation. Toward the end of the month I had the worst reading slump because all I had to do was assignment after assignment after assignment. I started a graphic novel called It's All Absolutely Fine by Ruby Elliot. This book is a graphic memoir that's all about Ruby Elliot and her mental illnesses and how she's gotten through them and it's a sarcastic take on how to survive and how to kind of make fun of the feelings that you're having in a positive light. I don't know if that makes sense but it just talks about the experience of having depression and anxiety and I thought this book was really funny but also had a great meaning. At the same time that it would poke fun at the feelings she was having there were also really serious discussion sections that talked about her ability to get through those mental illnesses so I thought it was a really beautiful balance of just really funny meme-like cartoons versus actual discussion of the problems she was having. The majority of this book is about the humor so I really enjoyed that aspect of it. However I don't have a lot of the disorders that she dealt with like bipolar disorder 
disorder or eating disorders, so I felt like I was only able to relate to a certain portion of it. Nevertheless, I think it's an important discussion, and if you would deal with any of the same mental illnesses that she does, I think it would definitely benefit you from picking it up. I gave that book four stars. The final book I read in September was a great end to the month because I gave it five stars, and it was a poetry book called Calling a Wolf a Wolf by Kaveh Akbar. This poetry collection talks about being Iranian American and feeling separated from your homeland, it talks about identity, it talks about heaven and hell and friendship. The author is a recovering alcoholic, so a lot of it is about the recovery process and feeling addicted to something and buoyed by that to be able to function. And this is one of the most beautiful collections that I've read in a while. A lot of poetry I think fits into that milk and honey category where it's a little bit like the author is spoon feeding you sentences. And I'm not knocking that down at all. I like that type of poetry as well sometimes, but I feel like this is just the perfect blend of accessibility like that is, but also involving deeper themes and starting to fold in different styles. Even if there were sections that I couldn't quite comprehend his meaning, everything just sounded so beautiful. So I was just floored by every single poem and every single poem I had highlighted lines that I liked and I think I tabbed maybe 20 of these poems as being favorites of the collection. I cannot wait to get a physical copy of this so I can go through and mark all my favorite parts because there were several. It was so beautiful. Once again, I gave that five stars and I cannot highly recommend it enough. I'm an egg and I'm very late to filming this so October is well underway but I do want to update a brief TBR that I want to get finished. <laughs> For my romanticism class, we are reading Moby Dick by Melville. I'm already a fifth of the way into this loving it so far. I think it's setting up to be like a four or five star book. It's very beautiful. I'm also currently reading the graphic novel Fun Home by Alison Bechtel. This is an autobiography written by a lesbian talking about her experience with her family growing up and especially how she dealt with the loss of her dad. Hello? Hey Whitney. What? Filming a oh, video? <laughs> I trusted you. <laughs> Get her a towel. Is this the Team Ten House? What's happening? It's not a very fun home to be in. <laughs> Goodbye everyone. This is unlike any graphic novel I've read before just because the narration that occurs between each of the drawings is so beautiful. Typically when I read graphic novels I only ever skim the pictures and the words but this one the story that occurs between the lines is so well written this almost reads like a novel. I can't wait to finish this one probably gonna be five stars. The next book I started I wouldn't say I'm currently reading this, I would just say that I started it, is the poetry book God is a Woman by Nin Andrews. This is a poetry book that's actually a bit of a full narrative rather than just individual poems because the theme of this book is to explore what the world would be like if women were the dominant sex. So each of these poems just completely flips our universe upside down and makes men sexualized and makes women on top of the chain at the workplace and in politics and it's so bizarre. I think the intention is to make you, if not uncomfortable, just aware that this is a world that could exist if everything was different. I think the hyperbole makes it that much more intense to read. I don't know when I'll finish it, but I'm 20 pages in and I'm very eager to read the rest of it. The last book I started is Rhett and Link's Book of Mythicality, which is their massive nonfiction book that explores the beginning of starting their YouTube channel and possibly other things, but that's really all that I've gotten to. I am only on page 14, but I really love Rhett and Link's channel. I think it's so much fun. I think they have great personalities and their writing style so far really reflects that. Ideally, I would listen to this on audiobook, but it's actually pretty hard to find. But I do think it's just as much fun reading it physically. Lastly, I have three books that I've gotten a little bit into. I got six pages into Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This book is about the niece of a scientist who does autopsies. She decides she wants to solve who Jack the Ripper is. So it takes place in 1880s in London and it's very feminist and awesome main character supposedly. Next I started the third book in the Wild Season series by Christina Lauren which follows two other characters and this is about two comic book nerds and one of them's Australian. I'm 30 pages in. I like this one a lot. I think I'm gonna like it more than the second book. Finally I started a romance book I am 17 pages into called Hold Me by Courtney Milan. My camera cut off mid-sentence but I will not be silenced. This book follows a trans main character whose love interest is a science nerd.
that's all I know. It's really fun and sassy so far. So those are all the books that I've read and I hope to read around September and October. As always, let me know down below in the comments if you have any feedback on any of these books, whether you've read them or not. I always feel like outros are so fake. I'm like, bye! Bye. <laughs>